This episode was brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. I'm Marley Oxenholm here at Securing Hardware in San Francisco, and I'm speaking with some of the trainers that are here today. Would you mind introducing yourself and what you do for us? Yeah, my name is Dmitry Nedespasov. I run a small consulting company out of Berlin, uh, Berlin, and I also have a U.S. subsidiary uh, called Toothless Consulting. Wonderful. And so would you tell me about your training today? Yeah, so I actually uh, teach people, I like to say the one sentence description of, of my training is that I teach people how to build uh, Python hardware interfaces. So what I actually do is I teach people how to build low level interfaces and for that we use something called FPJs, which are these magical uh, chips where you can implement everything at a very low level and all of the high level protocol stuff uh, people implement in Python and they get to do this for a week and then they get to go out into the world and put it to good use. Nice. Nice. Very cool. Okay. And now why are FPGAs interesting from a hardware hacking perspective? Right. So uh, one of the problems that you'll have, uh, I mean, one of the industries that comes to mind is, for example, automotive is if you look at a lot of the vendor uh, debugging tools that uh, you can you can obtain, uh, they're very limited in terms of scope and uh, the features that they have. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times uh, when you're looking at hardware, especially if there's uh, some proprietary components, um, you're much better off building your own hardware uh, and building your own hardware interfaces. And uh, a lot of times people will just buy the vendor debugging tools and uh, kind of get stuck with the limitations of those tools. And you don't have that problem uh, when, you, when you go ahead and implement it on an FPJ. You can basically build your own vendor-like uh, debugging tools to debug any, any sort of low-level protocols, ranging from uh, the automotive, just standard CAN, uh, to protocols like PCI Express uh, that are used more and more and even in mo modern smartphones. Okay, got it. And would you say that you need a background in electronics before working with that? I mean, that is a reason that people come to me yeah. <laughs> for, to have me uh, help, them, help them teach this training. And I mm -hmm. do have a computer uh, engineering degree. So I have more uh, of an electrical engineering background than most people in uh, doing, doing security, because I would say most people have a computer science background. Mm -hmm. But in general, uh, it's not that difficult, uh, although it does build on concepts that are that are that come from uh, electrical engineering more than they do computer science, but I can tell you that somebody who actually you know puts some I mean with the proper theory and uh, uh, kind of has a couple of days to to play around with it, they can definitely learn how to do put I mean implement stuff on FPGAs and put it to good use uh, within a week. Okay, and now can you give examples of hardware exploitation which are best done with FPGAs? Right. So one of my favorite examples, and uh, if you if you look at all of the gaming console hacks in the last couple of years, so Xbox, starting with the Xbox 360, PS4, even the PS3 to a certain degree, in one form or another, uh, the people exploiting this were using FPGAs. And one of the reasons is that with FPGAs, uh, you can implement very accurate timing. And so if there are certain attacks where you need to be, uh, where you need the hardware attack to happen exactly at a, at a certain point in time, the only way to really do it practically would be using something like a, like like an FPGA. So they're the tool of choice uh, for attacking uh, those kinds of platforms. Okay, got it. And now, what's one of the most interesting attacks you're demonstrating in class? So one of the things that uh, I specifically do with the students as uh, as part of uh, the five day version of my class. So here I'm doing the four day version. So I give it to them as as homework. Um, I basically show them how to do voltage glitching. So playing around with the supply voltage. So lowering the voltage at a specific moment in time. Mm -hmm. And the target platform that we're looking at it's a ARM based um, microcontroller uh, that we're using. And basically even though the security settings on the microcontroller have been configured properly and you should not be able to read out the firmware, by glitching it and trying to read it out at the right moment in time, you can completely read out the firmware bypassing the vendor's uh, security that they've set up to protect uh, the firmware that is on the board. That's really cool. Yeah. And I'm curious, do you see hardware vendors protecting against these types of attacks? And what type of preparation do you see in the industry today? So I think the biggest issue is that there definitely are vendors that uh, implement uh, these kinds of mechanisms. Mm -hmm. And I would even say that most vendors have a series of devices that implement a lot of these protections. But they're much more expensive than standard off-the-shelf devices just because so, so fewer units get sold. 
Uh, and that's really a big issue. And I just know that, uh, I mean, with the kind of consulting work that I do where customers come to me and ask me to review a design for them, uh, it's usually, I, I would say it, that it's better to invest in, uh, you know, just taking these kinds of attacks as a reality and figuring out other ways to, to mitigate it um, in software versus, versus uh, necessarily buying um, hardware that is from the ground up built to be resistant against, against these kinds of attacks. Okay, got it. And lastly, what made you interested in hardware security? Yeah, so I mean, I, I uh, totally can give a shout out to Bunny Wang. Uh, Bunny wrote the book on hacking the Xbox. And uh, when I was in high school, I was modding um, all my friends' Xboxes and soldering matchups in there. And then we would, you know, rent games uh, and, you know, all the things that you can do with a, with a modded Xbox back in, the, back in the day. And that's totally what got me into uh, soldering and hardware security. And then I went and uh, you know, studied computer engineering and eventually even uh, did a PhD in, in hardware security. Very cool. Dimitri, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate thank you. it. Thank you. This episode was brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online.